tonight on Connecticut's news station, students of Stone Academy attended their last night of classes, and now they're demanding answers. All the latest information on why they're shutting their doors for good. Plus, students of another school battling with Connecticut's governor over budget allocations. Why hundreds of Huskies flock to the Capitol asking for more funding. And new video tonight showing the aftermath of a piece of Connecticut tech falling from the sky. Officials now confirming just how deadly the crash was. The Fox 61 News at 10 starts right now. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we do start things off tonight with breaking news. Classes have finished at Stone Academy for the very last time. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. We can now confirm that administrative offices are open until the 24th of this month, but all academics are canceled. This comes after the announcement that the school will close on the heels of several non-compliance violations. I want to send things right over to Fox 61's D'Andrea Turner. She's joining us live in East Hartford at the Stone Academy campus and has the latest on this story. D'Andrea, how did this happen and now what's next for these students? Well, you guys, I'm going to break this down from the timeline. This started back in October of last year when Stone Academy was coming up for its renewal. Now, during this time is when they found eight different compliance violations. Now, in January of this year, the Office of Higher Education brought the students, the school, excuse me, to a compliance conference. And then last Monday, the school sent a letter to OHE stating that they're going to close the school down. As to what happens next, OHE must review and audit every single transcript before students can enroll in other schools or get refunds. My mother passed away uh, Tuesday, um, February 7th, and she wanted me to finish nursing, so I'm trying to, you know, do this. Hundreds of students from all of their campuses got the same email Tuesday afternoon that all three of their campuses, East Hartford, West Haven, and Waterbury, will be closing. Many of them reporting to their final class Wednesday evening. The Office of Higher Education says that Wednesday was the last day of classes, then they are closed. They never told us that our clinicals would not count. We took time away from our families, our children, work, everything. And now they're telling us we can't graduate. Stone Academy sent a letter to the Office of Higher Education Monday saying that they were closing down after numerous compliance issues were uncovered. Now the institution has days remaining until they close their offices for good. The transcripts will be turned over to our office and then we will sort of vet the transcripts through our auditing process and then we will make the transcripts available to students. OHE says that they will be paying for a professional audit because Stone Academy refuses. We need an audit, a professional audit, so that we can guarantee that if we're returning uh, money to people that it's accurate and uh, you know, an accounting firm has sort of certified that. Now, there were at least 1,500 open nursing positions across Connecticut. State Senator Saad and Ra, who is also a physician, says that this could worsen the need. Connecticut needs nurses like they need oxygen because in our healthcare systems, we are in trouble without having top notch nurses in, in all fields. Some of these students who were less than 30 days to finishing are hoping their hard work eventually pays off. This is what I want. I want to be a nurse. This is my passion. I've been wanting it for years. And for me to finally be here, and then it's not fair. It's not. And you guys, again, Stone Academy says its offices will remain in operation until next Friday to assist students in their next step. Now, OHE tells me that there are three schools across the state that could accept students. It's Chester, Lincoln Tech, and Griffin Hospital. They also tell me that they hope to have, a, have secured an auditor by this Friday. For now, in East Hartford, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Very upsetting, DeAndrea. Thank you very much. Well, a budget battle between UConn and Governor Lamont taking center stage at the state capitol today. Hundreds of students rallied and spoke out at a public hearing against the governor's proposed budget, arguing that it doesn't include enough funding for the university. Fox 61's Gabby Molina was at the public hearing tonight. She joins us live at the legislative office building in Hartford with more. Gabby. 
Caitlin Ben and Jen, that public hearing is still going on right now. It's been going on for at least the last five hours. And we've heard from different students and faculty from all different schools around the state, but it was people from UConn that showed up in big numbers to urge lawmakers not to pass the governor's budget as he proposed it. UConn students are hoping their voices are being heard. Speaking to state lawmakers Wednesday about the need for more funding than what Governor Lamont's proposed budget is offering. We're concerned that this budget simply does not provide the funding that the university requires to ensure that all of us as students have the opportunities that we need to be successful. Students left stores to spend the day in Hartford, first rallying outside of the state capitol, and then participating in a public hearing held by the Appropriations Committee. And I urge you to please continue support you. According to UConn's president, the proposed budget would leave the university with a shortfall of about $160 million next year, and that funds from the state would not cover salary increases already agreed upon by the state and state employee unions. For students, that could mean higher tuition, potentially $3,000 more a year. I think it's definitely disappointing, and, and we're waiting to listen to see what legislators have to say, to see what the governor has to say moving forward, and we're respectful of the fact that this is a difficult decision and there are a lot of moving parts. Governor Lamont argues that he's not making cuts to the university's budget, but rather increasing base appropriations. We've increased funding for UConn every year since I've been in office. It's up about 30 percent baseline since 2019. I think they got some misinformation. I think um, they were told that we're cutting uh, funding for uh, University of Connecticut, and that implied a lack of commitment for the kids and every, all the amazing things we're doing at UConn. But the university says it's not enough to cover costs. The governor argues that's because it's losing temporary COVID-19 relief funds, while students argue the state should be doing more to help. The bottom line is we have less money to work with than we previously did. Leadership on the Appropriations Committee says this is just the very beginning of this process, and the governor's proposal is simply a starting point. Try and be more empathetic in the circumstances, but also realize that we have a job that we have to do, which is balance a budget. Public hearing only had to do with funding for higher education, so there will be other hearings for other agencies. From there, lawmakers will take everything that they heard and then craft their own budget to propose. Live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Gabby, thank you. Time for a first check of the forecast here, and it's one that we don't think anyone's going to be complaining about too much. No, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now to break down the high temperatures we're expecting across the state. Hard to believe that it's actually going to be warmer than today. Tomorrow Tomorrow. We're going to take a run at records. A few spots were able to climb up around 60 degrees. Everybody will be well into the 60s tomorrow, which is quite impressive for this time of year. And it's even impressive right now. 53 in Hartford, 50 in Chester, upper 40s in Meriden. The wind has finally calmed down. It was quite blustery out there today. We will start the day off with sunshine tomorrow. Then we'll see increasing clouds. And in the late afternoon and early evening, we'll see a rising chance for some showers. Heading through the next 12 hours or so temperatures are going to kind of level out here so we could drop back briefly into the upper 40s as we head towards daybreak but then temperatures take off we're climbing into the low and even mid 60s as we head through the afternoon inland near 60 for the Connecticut shoreline some sunshine to begin the day then increasing clouds and a rising chance for showers I think the window for the start time of that will be between 3 and 5 p.m. and these temperatures will not drop tomorrow night. They're going to stay up, so it'll be another warm start to the day on Friday, another round of rain, and then cooler <laughs> for the weekend. Cooler but not cold. We'll explain your full forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. See you in a bit, Rachel. Thank you. We are following breaking news from El Paso, Texas tonight, where there's been a shooting inside of a mall. We know tonight at least one person is dead as a result of that shooting. Fox 61's Brent Harden following the story right now, and he has what we know at this hour. Brent. Yeah, Jen and Ben, it's a frightening scene in a city that has dealt with its share of deadly gun violence. Police say this shooting happened not too far from the Walmart store where 23 people were gunned down back in 2019 in a racist attack. And here's what we know right now. Police say one person was killed and three others were wounded in the shooting at the Cielo Vista Mall. We don't know how seriously those people were hurt. One person is in custody at this time, but police have not released any information about that person at this point. Authorities looking for a possible second person that might have been involved as well. Officers are going through the mall to secure the buildings 
teams in an attempt to locate that possible second person. Of course, at this time, it's too early to speculate on a motive in the shooting. We will keep monitoring the situation in El Paso and bring you any new information as we get it. I'm Brent Harden, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Jen and Ben, back to you. All right, Brent, thank you very much. Well, new video tonight out of Alabama shows the moments after a Sikorsky Black Hawk helicopter crashed to the ground. Officials now confirming that at least two people are dead. They say it crashed right around 3 p.m. They're not yet sure why. The helicopter belongs to the Tennessee National Guard, and both people that died in the crash were on board that aircraft. No word yet on whether anyone on the ground has been hurt. The manufacturer of the helicopter, Sikorsky, is based in Stratford. And staying in Stratford tonight, new tonight, another fatal pedestrian crash here in Connecticut. Police say a car hit a person while on Main Street near Garden Street. That individual was pronounced dead at the scene. Police say the driver of that car did remain on scene to help out in their investigation. They're asking anyone that saw that crash to please give them a call. And still developing tonight, tragedy in the northeast corner of Connecticut. State police say that two adults and one young child were found dead inside of a Brooklyn apartment last night. So far, police have confirmed very little about the victims, but neighbors tell Fox 61 that the two adults were a couple and the young child was just five years old. Brooklyn is a tight-knit community, and people that live near the house are still trying to process last night's discovery. It was unreal because... I didn't believe it would happen in this area, but it did. My neighbor came over and said, don't let the dogs out or go outside because someone has got a gun. Someone shot somebody or something. The superintendent of schools in Brooklyn has confirmed that the child was not in their school system. Officials have yet to identify the victims and have not released details on what happened. Route 202 back open tonight after a car crashed into a building in Torrington. That crash happened this afternoon right near the intersection of Peck Street and Route 202 in Torrington. Police say the 70-year-old woman behind the wheel of that car was transported by medical helicopter to be treated.